All right, everyone, today is the day. Today is the day that we finally learn how to play Zerk versus Zerk according to viewers of my YouTube channel. It's been a little while since I've last casted viewers of the games, but today we're gonna have a look at two ZVZs. And I'm sure, I'm sure we'll learn a lot, right? I'm sure there's lots of things you're gonna be able to incorporate into your own games as well, like a double, oh God, a double extractor trick to start things off. I'm already getting upset. Anyway, spawning here in the top left hand corner of Curious Minds with the blue Zerg drones, we have none other than SK Trashcan. <laughs> Great name. He said, Greetings, Brother Zerg. Oh my god. Really? We go double extractor trick into 16 spawning pool? Over the years, okay, in StarCraft 2, we've, we've done the math. We've run the numbers. We know what the optimal builds are. Especially when it comes to like the first couple of structures, there's really no reason to reinvent the wheel and going for a double extract trick into a spawning pool and then eventually an overlord is just simply inferior. His opponent in the opposite corner. Loco, calm down. Ooh, look at that. He's got the dark voice portrait. That's actually probably the hardest portrait to get in the game. Anyways, playing here with the red Zerg drones, we have none other than Azira. For this particular portrait, for it to spin around on your main base, you gotta win 1,001 if you want random games, 1,001 if you want Zerg games, 1,001 if you want Protoss games, and 1,001 if you want Terran games. Meaning that, at the bare minimum, because random deaths, uh, it does count double, uh, at the bare minimum, I guess, you have to play like 6,000 games, assuming you like, you know, win half and lose half. It's pretty impressive. It's a lot of games. Anyways, we'll find out together exactly what ended up going down here in these matches. Now, obviously, what are we doing? No, bro. Stop it. You go 16 freaking spawning pool after double extract a trick into a randomly timed gas with two drones in it and then a seemingly random timed hatchery here on the low ground as well. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. Like, the standard is a standard for a reason. <sighs> Here I was thinking we were gonna learn how to play ZV. We're gonna go creep tumor first. <sighs> Larva are good, man. Zerk has multiple. Re like you, you're already, you're already stacking up resources. We're also going spine crawler on the other side of the map. <laughs> Come on, man. I've coached a whole lot of people. From like bronze league all the way up to master league. Some of them have even broken into grandmaster league. I've seen a lot of Diamond League ZVZs, and I know that this is not the standard and not the way that people normally play. Um, but I guess we have two players here playing what they think is a very safe build. The problem, right, is that like if you go for spine crawlers like this and you try to go for like unoptimal versions of build orders, there's a bailing nest in the back. Like this is a Zira trying to play safe with, I guess, a safety bailing nest. But <sighs> say the opponent plays super greedy here, right? Say you scout here with your Zerklings. By the way, perfect scout here. Say you scout that something is a little bit off. Like, for example, a super quick lair. Now you can't really afford punishing it because, you know, you've already invested into a bunch of defensive things. That's why usually, right, people people make jokes. No, we don't need Banelings. You just scouted. You scouted that your opponent is not going to be going. Anyway, um, this is the reason why, like, people make fun of me and my quote-unquote allergy for static defense. In general, StarCraft 2 players, especially in the early game, are a little bit... a little bit allergic to making static defense early on, just because it's, you know, it's usually not optimal. It's good for defensive play, but oftentimes, you know, the offense may be the best defense. Anyways, what are we going for here? We're already going for it. Like, we don't even really have any scouting here. So, Mr. Trashcan does scout that there is a third hatchery coming up. Um, I like this build from Azira a little bit more, but the problem is, despite the fact that he scouted perfectly what the opponent was going for, he didn't actually respond to it at all. And now we've got a Spire coming up at the 4 minute mark. That is a very, very, very quick Spire. There's no Zerkling speed or anything along those lines. Trashcan! No! Trashcan! Stop it! If you're gonna go for a Muta Rush, the last thing you want is an Infestation Pit. You wanna, like... If you're gonna skip Link Speed, you're obviously trying to, like, make Mutas really quickly, right? <laughs> Anyways, Curious Minds does have this beautiful little wall off over here, so it's gonna be very diff- Yeah, sure, mate. Yeah, he really doesn't want to die to, like, a Roach Push or something along those lines. Um... <laughs> Why are we going Infestation Pit? I don't get it. What are we doing with the Infestation Pit? Are we gonna go straight into Infestors, a Hive? Swarm- We're going straight into a Hive. 
We have a pre five minute hive with Aspire just about to finish up. Hero was thinking we're gonna learn how to play ZVZ, but uh, these are two players trying to reinvent the wheel. Azira, though, is making spore crawlers. Okay, you know what? That's something. So, what is. Why did we make the spire and then not anything out of the spire? Oh. Oh. It hurts my feelings a little bit. Despite the fact that Azira has had all this opportunity to do whatever they like, they're still economically behind. Up to about right now. This is when additional drones are finishing up and finally Azira has taken the worker lead. There's Corruptor. <laughs> There's Corruptors coming up, really. So we have like a six minute hive, by the way. It's gonna be done at the six minute mark and we have Corruptors coming up. Not entirely sure what Corruptors are gonna be able to achieve here whatsoever. I re I'm really not sure. I'm assuming this is not his standard game, right? Is it? Because then you'd imagine how good it would be if he just played normal, normal build. What do we do? No! We gotta go for the Corruptor puke on the hatchery? That's never gonna work! There's already queens! Uh, that's the build up? That's what we've been doing for six minutes? Oh god. That is so bad. Like, this is genuinely awful. We do have a greater Spire, though. So he lost one Corruptor. <laughs> now we're gonna go Overlord sniping. Okay. Um... I guess... The thing is, if you morph in a low HP Corruptor into a Brute Lord, it will spawn with full health. It's just that Azura should have theoretically been able to kill the opponent about 12 times already. If he did a reasonable job playing a normal game. Sadly, that is not the case. So, yeah, we have a Roach Warren. We've got a Bailing Nest. We now have a Hydra Den coming up. We've got, like, the opportunity to make some Roaches, I suppose. He's also making, like, 12 Overlords at once, by the way. Um, that's one way of dropping your money. Still has got, like, 1,500 resources in the bank. I would say just a good old standard timing attack is not a bad idea. Or, or, you just keep the opponent contained on two bases. So we have Adrenal Glance coming up as well as 1-1 one, one upgrades. And we're now poking <laughs> the Roach Warren to death. Um, can we do like Brute Lords morphed in the back of the main? That would be kind of cool, actually. I've never seen that before. If we disregard the fact that like, you know, the early game here was pretty bad for the both of them. And I do feel like this game should have already been over. Like if this was played at a higher level... I think the game would have already been over just by players going for a standard one. But this is kind of cool now, all right? We have a proxy hatchery going up in the bottom left -hand corner of the map as well by, by our blue zerg. Now there's a lurker den coming up. 1-1 one, one is just about to finish, so these zerglings are going to pack an absolute punch. Uh, they will also have link speed and adrenal glands at this point, obviously. Brute Lords in the main base. Uh, four queens and two spores. I don't think that's going to cut it. Anyways, yeah, this base is super dead. Especially if the queen's not running over in that direction. He did make a couple of Hydras for some reason. I'm not exactly sure what the idea of the Hydras is. I feel like these Zerklings are still going to be able to win against the Hydras. Brute Lords, though, fly on top of Spore Crawlers. Brute Lords have like 10 ranged, man. Why are we flying them forward? Anyways, Zerklings right now. Oh, they could have caught the queens here, which is really the only counter. He's decided to go for the hatchery. There's absolutely no way he's gonna get the hatchery. Yeah, no. So what does our uh, red zerg player decide? <laughs> he decides to go a lurker den and a spire of his own. We're going Hydra, Corruptor, Ling Bane, Infestation Pit, Mutalisks. Uh, you have so many Hydras, man. Just go kill them, please. You've got so many. Just like, there you go. There you go, mate. Wasn't that hard. You don't need a spire. I think you'll be fine. Whenever I cast viewers to submitted games, and I know it's been a little while right now, I do want to, like, bring it back more regularly. I used to be so kind to people submitting games to me. But over the years, I have... I've kind of lost my chill a little bit, yeah. Like, I'm looking at these games, and I'm just wondering where these guys would be ranked if they played just a normal game. Like, look what's going on here, man. These Corruptors were made to finish the job that a couple of Zerklings started? That is so many minerals and gas down the drain. Anyways, 
It just makes you wonder what if they, you know, would interpret scouting information and then respond accordingly. What if normal builds would be played? SK3 or SK Trashcan, by the way, still only at 48 drones. So despite the fact that we now have the bottom left base, it's really got very little going on. There's lurkers coming up here. I still like Azira a little bit better, I think, all things considered, despite the fact that he's taken so much damage. Despite the fact that he's really got very little going on for himself. Oh my god, that's an animation I've literally never seen before for the Lurker Den. You see that? It was doing like a crazy dance. I guess that was the Lurker Den dying off of creep because, you know, structures and stuff. That, that hatchery is not positioned correctly at all. It's like literally like two squares off. <clears throat> I guess it'll save the Lurker Den though. Um, so we've practically seen every Zerk unit at this point, right? What units haven't we seen? We haven't seen Ultralisks. We haven't seen Swarm Hosts. We have seen a few Lurkers, haven't we? Yeah, there are Lurkers available right now, although uh, they're not with the actual army, so... <laughs> that, yeah, that kind of sucks. Uh, what other unit haven't we seen? Have we seen... Yeah, we did see Bane Links, Just a couple defensively. Not exactly sure where they went. Ravagers? We haven't seen Ravagers either. Infestors? Vipers? Ah, oh, there's a bunch of units we haven't seen yet. But I mean, emphasis on yet. This game isn't over yet. <laughs> I feel like we can see... We can we can definitely expect Ultras here, okay? From the Matt Lad SKT Trashcan or SK Trashcan. I mean, he's already got plus two, plus two. Plus three, plus three could definitely start up with Zergling Baneling support. This is actually quite strong. It's just that he's got, like, no economy at all. I don't know why we decided to take the bottom left base, by the way. Azira doesn't really seem to be in a position to do literally anything this entire game. This guy is playing in full crisis mode the whole time, trying to, like, not die to stupid stuff. That, at this point, he's just also forgot to actually try to make good stuff. Which is, yeah, a little bit unfortunate. Um, so the main reason why we don't see Brute Lords in Zerk vs. Zerk is the fact that, like, they can be abducted, right? So usually, <laughs> when one player has the opportunity to make Brute Lords, the other player also has the opportunity to abduct him. Because usually we don't see a six minute hive, believe it or not. So as soon as Vipers come into the mix, you can just abduct them into the Hydra clumps, and then Brute Lords get absolutely destroyed. Corruptors here in blue, not protecting the Brute Lords at all, so all that these five Brutes did was... No, stop it, man. I feel like Mr. Trashcan just found out about the Caustic Spray ability on the Corruptors that he's now incorporating it in every single game. This is the most usage I've ever seen of Caustic Spray. Transfusion right there by Azira. Okay, nicely done. Keeping most of those Corruptors alive, if not all of them. We even have a little bit of Micro right now. All right. Both players, by the way, despite their terrible economies, still are packing a lot of economy or a lot of resources. One way of dropping the resources, though, is definitely Ultralisks. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so now you have a couple Corruptors. What are we gonna do? I think going Overlord hunting is not a bad idea. And you know what? Maybe you gotta... Gotta bring your opponent a treat as well and Corruptor puke on their main base. So far, I've learned absolutely nothing in this game, guys. I've learned that there is a lot of people apparently out there that uh, just do completely random things. And you know what? One one of these players is got no swarm hosts. That's gotta be a misclick. There's players out there doing random things, and one person is gonna win this. Uh, ultras versus swarm hosts. Why are we going ultra speed upgrade first? That's not the. Uh, anyways, um, burrow is coming up. Melee upgrades, even though we've just started up Swarmhost production, and Swarmhost benefit from Missile. I guess he can't get more Missile upgrades because he's not at Hive. Corruptors did find the base in the bottom left. Please don't idle them on top of a Spore. Did he just waste a cooldown on Caustic Spray? No, he didn't. Because they were, they were just about to turn on over in that direction. Okay, now all of a sudden this base will fall very quickly. After a couple of seconds of this spray being active, there you go. Then all of a sudden the damage will start adding up. We have tons of Zerklings here, but the Zerklings are countered by Lurkers. I'm just... <sighs> I'm not sure about Swarmhose, man. What are Swarmhose gonna do? Lurkers will destroy everything on the ground. I feel like he should just make more Swarmhosts, because now he's got air dominance. 
right? And these corruptors. So if you have air superiority, you should probably focus on countering ground. And Swarmos, I mean, they can counter ground, I suppose. I mean, they're currently inside of a Nidus Worm. Okay, Nidus Network. Uh, going over, okay, on the left side of the map. Uh, that's not enough. That's, that's not enough Red Zerg. I mean, uh, Caustic Spray, or sorry, uh, Chitinous Plating here is not done yet. But I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> There's a lot of very low HP Ultras, but... Alright, where did the Swarm Hose go? Did the Swarm Hose already do any Locust shenanigans? No. They, wait, I'm gonna back up for a second. Where did the Swarm Hose go? Oh, he activated it in the natural? What is that gonna do? That base is already dead. Okay, well maybe he can kill like a couple of couple of ultras if he targets. Oh my god, that is so many low HP ultras. My ultras always kill themselves on accident. Luckily right here, um, ooh, <laughs> uh, luckily right here I was gonna say he's still marching up the ramp. At least luckily for Azira, they should have all been dead. I'm pretty sure, but Kitness plating is finishing up right after the engagement. Uh, so to clarify, Ultras have two upgrades. One upgrade that allows them to move 20% faster off creep. So pretty much pointless in Zerk versus Zerk. Uh, and they have an armor upgrade that makes them significantly more powerful. Like it's not even it's not even close. Both of the upgrades are good, obviously, but the armor upgrade is miles better. Anyways. Guess he accidentally managed to keep the majority of them alive anyway. That's a long fly, dude. That's... Mm. <laughs> I'm not sure about this one, mate. Um, you can kill Spore Crawler. If you target it. Eh, could have maybe even killed the base. Yeah, that was... That was... Okay, that was something. Corruptors in the bottom left and corner once again. Mass Spore Crawler, though, is gonna fix this shenanigans. Couple of spores, couple of spines, SK trash can is gonna mine this base no matter what. Despite the fact that he probably should have just taken it in one of the more obvious locations. He's now doing a Muta transition, despite the fact that he knows the opponent has eight corruptors out. Now believe it or not, eight corruptors will do much better than ten mutas in a straight up battle at the very least. Why is he so keen on putting the swarm out as far away as possible before activating the locust wave? No, no, no. Alright, no, not kill the Oh, no, just attack move. Just... Uh, uh, uh. That was more successful than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. Oh, he's targeting the spore so the Corruptors can't come in for the puke. Of course! <laughs> How did I not consider that? I'm so stupid, dude. These guys are way ahead of the strategic meta. Like, I'm sitting here playing 2022 StarCraft. These guys are playing 2027 StarCraft, okay? Here's the two lurkers, though. They are ready to line up some kills. Oh my god, these corruptors. Or sorry, these these lurkers. 31 kills on the one of them, at least. Most of them are zerklings. Now these ultras, though, have a little bit of more armor. Um, Hive is finally about to finish up for Azira, but Azira doesn't have that many units anymore. I mean, we've got a lot of swarm host. <laughs> Why do we have swarm host? Here goes another stupid locust wave going into the main base. Guess what? It's gonna kill like one queen. Great harassment, don't get me wrong, but like it's not doing much. Maybe if you did it a little bit closer, you could have actually killed the hive. Then it would have been significant. Those two hero ultralisks though from earlier. Um, okay, they're finally gonna get picked off because once again, he's right clicking a base. Uh... These are still uh, plus three Adrenal Gland Zerklings, though, so they're gonna deal a lot of damage. As <laughs> That's how you know it was still a Diamond League game, huh? Yep, that, that makes sense. All right, I'll be honest with you guys. <clears throat> I don't think we really learned anything in that previous game, right? I think what we learned primarily is that apparently there's a lot of people that just kind of just throw a lot of shit at a wall and then they hope something sticks and then eventually someone obtains the victory, right? I feel like we watched two players continuously lose for about 20 minutes, but eventually someone did magically end up winning, right? I'm sure this game will be a little bit... No, no, no! No, dude! What is this? Did you play against Mr. Trashcan? Did you think his build order was good? Anyways, what I'm trying to get at is that I'm sure this Zerk versus Zerk between two Diamond League players on Hardwire is gonna be a lot better. Did we just go 14? 
<laughs> Did we just go 14 hatch? It's 14 hatch versus extractor trick spawning pool. All right. So spawning in the top right hand corner, playing with the red zerg drones. We have none other than Winter Mute. His opponent in the opposite corner with the blue zerg drones. He goes by the name of Jean Plisse. Jean Plisse? Jean Pl I don't know. My French is not very good. Mais j'ai un très gros beat. So, you know, I got I got that going for me. Anyways, um... <laughs> my French... Yeah, I had French at school for many years, but... Never really learned a whole lot. Anyways, um... Already, this, this is off to a great start. We have a super early spawning pool, a very quick gas guys are taken here as well. Wintermute is gonna get 100 gas, like half a minute before this spawning pool is done, which, you know, is usually not what you're aiming for. Normally you wanna start up link speed, all right? <laughs> Please pull out of gas at a, no, 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 Mr. Mute, come on, bro. Please pull out of gas. You're hurting yourself so much. He's gonna get like 200 gas by the time the spawning pool finishes. That's super inefficient. Anyways, Jean Plisse, I guess you played against Mr. Trashcan, was inspired by the build order and decided, you know what? Double extractor trick spawning pool, mm-mm. That's what I want to see. If you, if you, like, there's... Wait, he doesn't have gas yet, okay. I was gonna say, if you're gonna do this, I guess you want to get zerking speed relatively quickly as well, but I guess the gas went at an awkward timing. Did, no. <laughs> What is this horrible build? It's so bad. Why are we? Okay, look. The reason why there's a standard in StarCraft 2 is because it's it's proven to be the most effective. Generally speaking, when you see your you see your opponent doing something stupid that isn't the standard, right? You you make units and you go kill them. <laughs> that that's usually good advice. Right here. Did we just start link speed, by the way? What? At like what? 260 gas? All right. So in a normal game, right? Say we went hatch gas pool. You would start up zerking speed. You would then make a round of links when the first injects pop off. And then you just go kill your opponent. Jean please doesn't have anything at the front. He doesn't have any units. He doesn't have link speed. He's got a very quick spire. Or sorry, a very quick lair. So I guess he's going spire, but he doesn't have the gas for it right now. He's going for a road. Like, what is the timing of this lair? We're going second gas right now. So, I mean, the only reason I can imagine someone going quick spire is to go quick mute us. But I guess in the previous game from Mr. Trashcan, we already learned that corruptors are also a choice. So, what was the lair for? Why did we skip link speed? Why did we make a wall off at the front? Why is John Police uh, still in this game? It's because Mr. Mute is not punishing it, right? That's, that's why. That's why. I'm pretty sure, though, if uh, Mute right now would, like, make a round of Zerklings and just killed his opponent, assuming Link Speed would be done at a reasonable time. Did he cancel Zerkling Speed? Whoa. Did we need that gas? Like, we now have 300 gas. What are we doing? What is going on? We have a Hydra then coming up, a couple of slow roaches going across the map too, because the roach speed was... <sighs> okay, I don't want to start sounding condescending, okay, but like, there's so much wrong in these games. It's... <laughs> this one definitely is on the lower end of Diamond League now, because the previous one at least made a little bit of sense as far as timings go. This is... This is wild. So we have we have 20 workers, a bunch of gases. The other guy canceled link speed despite that he had too much gas already. Now we have an attack that can literally be helped with like two queens and some transfuses and a spine crawler. All right. Um, also, Jean please did not go for a missile upgrade, so we're going to get fast roaches, fast hydras, but honestly those units will all just get destroyed by a group of roaches. No more Mr. Nice Guy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. I've watched too many things, okay? I've seen too much stuff. Why did he cancel link speed? I'm still trying to make sense of it. Like, usually if you cancel link speed, it's because you, like, are saving your gas for something. But we don't have a lair. 
He's adding on five roach or five drones right now too. So if you wanted to go for a roach push with plus one missile, which I actually think is a pretty decent choice, you would have to go right now. Here's another timing attack, Winter Mute. Go, go kill him. Go, go. Oh, the roaches are too thick. You gotta kill one of your own Evos. You should have gone right with plus one missile finishing. And then if you, no, it doesn't work. He just tried that. Um, if you had Zerkling speed, you could just reinforce with tons of Zerklings and you would kill, you would win. So attack opportunity number one was with Link speed. And then you just made a round of Links and just killed your opponent because he didn't even have a wall off at the front and he didn't have a tech structure. Second opportunity was about 45 seconds ago, I feel like. And then with Zerkling speed, what you do is you like follow up with mass Zerkling and then morph in Ravagers with leftover gas and then you just go kill him. Now it's a little bit awkward though. Mmm, Hydras and straight up battles are pretty trash. But that is a lot of Hydras. Yeah. So Hydras have far higher damage per second than Roaches, but they also die way quicker. So like if you go pure Hydra against pure Roach, it's pretty bad. But if you have a couple of Roaches in front to tank, it's very good for the Hydras. Um, I feel like counterattacking right now with Hydras is a bit dangerous, but maybe you can snipe a couple Ovis. Okay, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna give up? No, you don't need your own Hydra then, dude. Like, literally the last thing you need right now. I really think you should just make pure roaches. This will win. Go, go fight him. Assuming you have roach speed, which you don't. This game feels like a good 2,000 MMR lower than the previous one. Genuinely. It's the same league, but... Maybe one of them was NA server and the other one is EU server. And one is like on the very bottom end of diamond and the other one is at the very top end of diamond or something. I have a hard time believing though that that first game was at the top end of diamond. <laughs> I really don't think so. No, I really don't believe it. That was... I don't know, unless they were trolling or something, but I don't think so, because... I wonder sometimes if, like, players purposefully play bad build orders, just so they can submit it as a replay. You know what I mean? Because... You know I'm probably more likely to cast, you know, exciting games that are a little bit crazy. So therefore, there is a good chance that if you play something really dumb, you might get featured in one... Do you think that's a thing? Do you think people actually purposefully play pre like? Do you think Mr. Trashcan, for example, was practicing a Corruptor first build just to try and get picked up on the ch I don't know. <laughs> Please tell me that's the case, though. That way I can mentally justify it a bit better. Anyways. Long distance mining a gas geyser. All right. Let's go, dude. Winter Mute is gone for a couple of lurkers rather than just killing his opponent with a roach timing attack. Not Swarm Host! Get out of here! Jean, please! Jean, please! Whoever replays you've been studying... Actually, I guess it's Mr. Trashcan's replays. You should, you should delete those off of your hard drive, okay? Do not feel inspired by Mr. Trashcan. He's a bad influence on you, okay? Remember when your mom warned you when you first went to high school that there's gonna be bad kids out there? That kid is Mr. Trashcan. He's trying to influence you not with smoking and alcohol and drugs and all that, but he's trying to influence you with terrible strategies. Don't do it! What are we doing with Swarm Hose right now? There's an obs- okay, we do have a little changeling scout. So Mr. Mr. Mew, who got that's so much damage. Yeah, 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 get them in there, lurkers. He doesn't have any detection over here. Just wait, wait, there's no detection. Wait! Thought for a second he was gonna uproot those lurkers, but thank god he didn't. <sighs> Alright. Jean Police is looking at this, he's like, you know what I need? More swarm hosts. I only have eight. I need fifteen. Fifteen is bad, dude. Everyone knows that. It's sixteen or fourteen. Odd numbers? Ugh, not in my games. <laughs> okay, well never mind. He's uh, evening up the count a little bit anyway. Lurkers still do uh, a lot of damage here, though. Yeah. Yeah, Lurkers are pretty good. Okay, there's another wave of Swarmos coming up. Okay, you know what? He's getting out of there. Good good job, Wintermute. He's even macroing on the back of it, which is very nice. Uh, 
See, the problem is when you all army hotkeys, swarm hosts, it's a complete derp. Because the locusts are going to be included in the all army hotkey as well. So you need to make sure you hotkey them. And specifically, the swarm hosts should really be on a separate control group as well. It's kind of a cool death animation, right? It's kind of cool. Anyways. Winter mute right now. The strategic mastermind that he is. Burrow's a lurker. Pretty much out of range of anything here. But he is going around the site. A couple of roaches over here as well in the middle of the map. Randomly rallied over here in this direction too. But I've got a feeling that this base is as good as dead. Although swarm hosts are scary though. Like swarm hosts are so uncommon that I'm not exactly sure how this matchup will go. But I'm assuming you want to run here if you miss the red. Yeah, because the locusts do a lot of damage. Unless you have like critical numbers of, of lurkers. Yes. <laughs> they actually do pack a punch. How many swarmos, by the way, that we see go- We've seen 16 swarmos die! Ay ay ay. Yeah, like, that's another reason why you shouldn't put them on one control group, I suppose, huh? <laughs> Wonderful. Those two locusts really changed the game. Um, okay, we have Roach Speed, guys. Hell yeah, let's go. Wintermute finally got himself the Roach Speed upgrade. Jean Pleach right now with a 50 supply advantage. It's gonna be really hard to deflect him at this stage in the game. So that's the third base gone. He is going for a big counter attack on the other side of the map. I think he's ready to finish the job that he started earlier. It's just that I'm kind of looking at these armies. Um, how is Wintermute gonna defend his main base? He's got a couple lurkers coming up. We're on random swarmos right over here as well. He's actually bypassed the third entirely and is just going for the throat, I guess. Okay. More swarm hosts are coming up as well. At the same time, on the other side of the map, Jean Police is going into the main base too. Of course, they're targeting the main structures first and foremost, because that's the thing that's very common, I've noticed. Rather than going for, like, guaranteed damage, we're taking the biggest gamble. But I guess uh, in the end it will probably end up falling. There you go. Lair ends up going down. I mean, this is a very bad situation for Winter Mute. Uh, we do still have two Overseers. Okay, that's good. Lair is going to be in a bit of trouble here as well for uh, for Mr. Jean Please though very soon. Or I guess Monsieur, Monsieur Jean, Please, Jean Please. Um, Couple of roaches over here derping in the back. I guess it's worth noting that the win condition in StarCraft 2 is to destroy all of your opponent's structures. So if you manage to kill all of your opponent's structures, you win the game. There's only a few structures remaining right now for Winter Mute. He does have uh, a couple of drones out on the map, and as far as I can tell, there is no random drone anywhere for the blue Zerg player. So both players are actually dealing a lot of damage to each other's, okay, each other's side of the map. There's a random hatchery in the middle of the map. I actually really like it. Look at Mr. Winter Mute over here. Playing a strategy game. Jean Please though, just sending the army back home. He's found a couple of the drones, so that's good. Since Winter Mute doesn't have the greatest macro, he's got a lot of resources in the bank, so he still has uh, the opportunity to morph those extra drones into some extra structures. Wouldn't mind seeing him kill some of these as well, though, but I guess he did manage to get it right over there. At this point, since all of the hatcheries of Jean Please are gone, he has been revealed. So at this point, Winter Mute can see every single last structure that he needs to kill in order to win the game. At the same time, though, Jean Please at this point assumed that he had killed all of his opponent's bases too. But at this point, that proves to not be the case. He needs to find the hatchery on the left side of the map. He knows that his opponent hasn't been revealed yet. So he's taking the entire army once again to watch the other side. Two lurkers over here wandering past this army. I don't know where they're going. I think they should really try their very best and get some more work done. Another hatchery is planted in the bottom right hand corner. Winter Mute currently with 8 supply, going up against 95 supply of Jean Please. Okay, 
Lurker over here, number one, going into the natural expo. It's going to be able to get rid of these final structures over here in the net. In the main base, in the meantime, as well, there's one drone ready to, I guess, produce literally anything. It could try and become a gas, guys. Just Jean Plisto not splitting up the units, not killing the structures in the main base. Okay, finally, we do have a bit of a split with the swarm host. He's not really scouting around the map, so he hasn't found those hatches. There's one hatch right over here that he finally magic magically flew a couple of those units over as well. So he's found one of the hatches. That's good. Swarmhost in the main base have gotten rid of the final structures too, but he haven't, hasn't found a hatch in the bottom left. Um, how many structures remain? There's only two gas geysers! That's the last of them! Winter Mute! With eight supply, wins against someone who has 95. Hey, if you have an awesome game of StarCraft 2 as well that you would like me to cast and make fun of, you can submit it to replays at loco.tv. Just don't get upset if I tell you your build order sucks, okay?